Hello and welcome back to Distributions. And before we start, as always, I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Now, in today's part 9, we will talk about coordinate transformations for distributions. Hence, the first thing we will do is to look at a linear map we call A. And it simply should map the space Rn to itself. Now, in the case that this map is invertible, we can see it as a coordinate transformation. This means, here you would find the old coordinates and on the right hand side the new coordinates. So visually we can say we have a grid that is transformed into a new one. For example, the map A could do something like this. Here please keep in mind an invertible linear map always transforms lines into lines. Stretching, rotating and reflecting is possible, but a line will always be a line. Moreover, for us it's important to note that one property for functions does not change under such coordinate transformations. And of course, this is the property to be locally integrable. More precisely, if f is locally integrable, f after a is also locally integrable. So by doing this composition, we don't leave this space here. Now of course, the question for us is, what is the connection between the two corresponding distributions? And you might already know, this will be the blueprint for the general definition. In other words, we need to define what happens to a distribution when we apply such a coordinate transformation. Therefore, we first need to look what TFA is. So let's apply it to a test function phi. Of course, we don't have a problem here, we know this is given by an integral. However, now inside the function f here, we have the map A. So this is simply what the composition does. However, we know we want to get to tf, so to the original function f, which means we have to get rid of A. Indeed, in an integral we know we can do this by a substitution. In other words, the change of variables formula can help us here. Now, if you are familiar with this formula, you might know that the determinant of a plays a crucial role here. Indeed, the absolute value of this determinant here is what we need to apply the change of variables formula. Hence, in order to include it here, we have to divide by it at the beginning. And here, please note, we don't divide by zero because we have an invertible map. Ok, and now the substitution works when we introduce a new variable we could call y. Indeed, a neat monomic device would be to say that this last part is dy. And with this, we immediately get the new integral. However, please don't forget to substitute this x as well. With this, we find in the integral f of y times phi of a inverse y. Now, this result is very nice, because we can rewrite the integral as the distribution tf. More precisely, it's tf applied to a special test function. Now of course we see it's a test function phi but scaled and in composition with a inverse. Indeed, if we combine all of this, we get the integral back. In summary, you see, this here is the connection between both distributions. Or as often, we could take the right hand side as the definition for the left hand side. In fact, this is exactly what we have to do for non-regular distributions. Hence, let's put this into a definition. So this one works for each distribution t and linear map a. However, as before, a should be invertible. Ok, and then we can define a new distribution we call t after a. And of course you know, we define it by using test functions. And now in the spirit from above, this should be the same as applying the distribution t to this test function. Ok, here you should see, without any problems, this defines a new distribution t after a. Hence, this is the distribution after the coordinate transformation a. Indeed, sometimes you also see different names for the same distribution. 
And moreover, at this point I can tell you, it is helpful to introduce a new strange notation. I find the notation strange because we introduce a variable x for a distribution. For example, you sometimes see that one writes delta x for the delta distribution. However, you already know that this literally does not make sense because the delta distribution is not a regular one. This means that there is no way that we can see the delta distribution as a function. However, by having such a variable name, it makes definitions like this one more readable. Therefore, I would say if you know that this is a sloppy notation, you are allowed to use it. In particular, here we could write t of ax. And then of course, we apply this to the test function phi of x. Okay, and then the formula from above tells you that this is t of x applied to the test function here, where we put in a inverse x. So, now please don't forget, formally this just represents the formula we have written above. However, you see by using the variable x in a sloppy way, we don't need to use the circles anymore. And indeed, this makes it more readable. Therefore, even if you don't like this notation, you will see it very often. Okay, now by looking back at our motivation here, we see that we can also consider other coordinate transformations. For example, we could include a translation as well. This means that we shift all the coordinates by a vector b. With this, we can define a new distribution t of ax plus b. And now by the same idea as above, we just shift the translation to the test function. In other words, there we have a inverse of x minus b. Hence you see, without any problems, we can define a new distribution under an affine transformation. So after this, you might ask, can we do this even more general? Indeed, you might already know some coordinate transformations that are not linear. Moreover, you might also note that the reasoning with the change of variables formula from above also works more generally. There, we just need a smooth bijective function g. However, test functions are c infinity, therefore g should also be c infinity. Otherwise, here our definition would break. But with this, you see, we can do the same thing and define the distribution tgx. Okay. Now, in order to define this, we can look at the integral again for a regular distribution and there we see we need the Jacobian matrix here. Of course, besides this, it looks exactly the same as before, now with g inverse. However, here please note, the Jacobian matrix can depend on x. Therefore, also here, the sloppy notation is helpful again. Okay. Then I would say, at the end of this video here, let's look at an example. And maybe, because we have talked about this before, let's take the delta distribution again. And moreover, our coordinate transformation A should be a rotation. This means A inverse should be the same as A transpose. In particular, this implies that the absolute value of the determinant is 1. Hence, the formula from above is a little bit simpler. Therefore, in the next step, let's calculate the new distribution delta after a. Now, by the simplified formula, this is delta applied to this test function. Therefore, by the definition of the delta distribution, we know we have to evaluate this test function at zero. However, there you see a inverse of zero is still zero, so we have phi of zero. However, of course, phi of zero can be written with a delta distribution. It's simply delta applied to the test function phi. And now because this holds for all test functions, we see delta x is the same as delta ax. More precisely, saying it in the correct way, the two distributions are the same. Now, because this holds for every rotation, we can say that the delta distribution is invariant under rotations. So you see, this is an important property a distribution can have. Indeed, we already know such properties for functions, but they translate to distributions as well. 
and later we will see that such properties can be very helpful for calculations. However, first in the next video I want to talk about derivatives for distributions. This will be very important and therefore I hope that I see you there. Have a nice day and bye!